I know that you're struggling. But he says, hang on a little bit longer. You see, I know that you can't see the horizon. But he says, open up your eyes and look unto heaven. Call on me. They believe in him and give up themselves to him to be saved by him. They hear his sayings as doctrines, not merely externally, but internally. They allow the word of God to enter the mind and permeate the life. They love the words of God. They believe in them. They feel the power. They taste the sweetness. And they have delight in them. If you have not come to that point, brethren, something is wrong. If the word of God is not a joy to you, something is wrong is wrong. For the Word of God is the rock that we must build. Amen. Don't build a facade, right. but build a solid foundation. Don't try to be popular, but stand on the Word of God now. Amen. I've heard of preachers now. Preachers trying to be popular instead of preaching the Word of God. It is not the popularity that's going to change the people. You see, I didn't come into the church because of music. I know some of you guys are very talented. And, and if music is very sensitive for you. But music wasn't the one that molded me. And that is breaking me every day. Music helps to elevate me. But doesn't keep me elevated. I need you to hear that now. You see, when I look at the Word of God, what is done in my family, I was the first one to come into the church. And second, my brother, who used to make fun of me, <coughs> through the Word of God, was back. It wasn't a music. And then followed another one, and another one, and another one. It was the Word of God. It wasn't anything else. It wasn't the facade. In the midst of the storm, brethren, it is the word of God that's going to keep you steady. I want you to go to Psalms verse 8, chapter 18, verse 30 with me. Psalms chapter 18, verse 30. And if you get there before me, please wait for me. Psalms 18, verse 30. As for God, His way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in Him. I didn't hear an amen. amen. Let me read it again for you. As for God, He is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all those who trust in Him. Amen. The word of God will protect. I know some, and I know that sounds ridiculous, but the word of God will actually protect you while you're in the midst of the storm. The word of God is not going to be removing you out of the storm. Uh uh. That's not my Jesus. You see, when he was in the boat, he stayed in the boat with the disciples and calmed the storm. It is the word of God that's going to give you the step. Go with me now to Psalms 119, verse 165. Psalms 119, verse 165. It says, Great peace of those who love your law. And nothing causes them to stumble. You see, you want peace in your family. You must read the word of God. There is no guru. There is no psychologist or counselor that can give you that peace. There is no medication that can give you that security. Or that peace. It is the word of God. When marriages are falling apart, it is the word of God that will change that husband to come back. You see, when the wife is going astray, it is the 
word of God that's going to bring her back. There is no counselor that's going to change that. Don't fool yourself. You see, when the word of God goes into the heart, there is peace to trust the Lord. Amen. Peace in your relationship with your child. Peace when you are without a job. Peace when your family seems to be breaking apart. It is your foundation on the rock that will help you to weather that storm. Amen. It is peace in the word of God. I want you to go to Psalms 119, verse 133 for me. The word of God says, direct my steps by your word, and let not iniquity have dominion over me. You see, there's a reason why Satan doesn't want you to read the word of God and understand it. If you actually understood and it sunk into your head while we just finished reading, you'd be praising God. I know that, trust me, because when I read it, I said, Amen. That's right. That's right. Let me explain it to you. Verse 133. Direct my steps by your word and let that iniquity have dominion over me. When you want to go back to your life of sin, when you want to go back to your life of adultery, of lying and cheating, and you feel like you're powerless, the word of God is the one that's going to keep you from it. I know that. I've experienced it. And it is the word of God that's going to bring you back when you want to leave. Trust me on that. Amen. It's not the facade or how good the church looks. Uh -uh. That's right. Or how good the choir sings. In the choir you sing beautifully. I'm not attacking you. Trust me on this. Right. But I want you to understand that it is the word of God, brethren, that's going to get the church moving. When the people of God study, something happens in the church. Have you noticed that? No longer are we fighting one against another. Ah, ah, no! You're coming back to look for Jesus and Jesus alone. Give me more. Have you seen that? No longer do you worry about how short the dress is. No. No longer do you worry about what somebody said about you. But you worry about the word of God. Amen. They wreck my steps, David said. And iniquity. I want you to understand something. There is a difference between sin and iniquity. You see, iniquity is the life that you live. That can you continually go back. I need you to understand that. Iniquity is a life or a way of life that may have power over it. And David says, direct my steps, and iniquity will not control my life, Lord. It will not, and it will not have power over me. If you go with me to Psalms, again back to Psalms. Actually, let's move on because I'm running out of time and I have a lot of quotes for you. Luke chapter 6, verse 47. says this, and whoever comes to me, and here's my saying, and does them. Did you catch that? And does them. You don't just hear the word of God. Remember what James says, James chapter 1 verse 16. Actually, let's go there right now. James chapter 1 verse 16. It goes like this. I'm sorry, verse 21 down, not verse 16. I'm thinking of Romans. Verse 21 down, it says, Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive meekness and, implant the, and meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and that hear it only, and deceive yourselves. You must act on what you hear, He's not only a hearer, but the person must be a doer of the gospel. When you see the needy, my wife, actually when I'm driving down the highway, my wife hates it when I do this. Because I'll be driving on the highway, and I'll see somebody that needs a ride. I'll pull over. But she hates it because I'm a small guy. I can't defend myself that well. Come on. 
150 pounds soaking wet. Okay? What am I going to do against a big man? But I'll pull over. Even sometimes, even though I don't want to pull over, I'll pull over. And once the person gets into the car, I can do it, my brother. Good, hey, man, where are you going? All right, we're going to Edmonton. Let's go to Edmonton. I drove back and forth from CUC to Edmonton every single day. Every single day. An hour there and an hour back. An hour there and an hour back. And every single week, I would see somebody walking down the road. Sometimes I'd be so tired, I'd say, Lord, please, no. I'm tired. I want to go home. Uh, can you just ask him, maybe just jump into the ditch or something? I don't know. <laughs> but when that person got into my car, I had a man once get into the car. And I said to him, where are you going? He says, I'm going to Edmonton. I said, don't worry, get in, I'll take you. As we're getting into Edmonton, I said, do you know Jesus? I just got out of jail. And I'm a drugger. And I've been, I lost my wife and my children, he says, and I can't change my life. 